This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And today I'm going to show you an absolutely ridiculous combo in Elden Ring. Let's get to it. So I'm seeing a lot of builds out there that are like frozen flame builds because if you freeze a target, you can't freeze a target again for some period of time. However, you can reset that time by simply lighting them on fire. So attacking them with a flame weapon, shooting them with a flame arrow, basically anything with a fire effect on it. Once you've done this, it removes the frozen effect on them, allowing you to refreeze them again for bonus damage. And some people are using this in alternative to bleed because the problem with bleed is, is every time you bleed a target, it builds up a resistance and it's harder and harder every time to bleed the target. However, that doesn't appear to be the case with freezing a target. So that got me thinking, you know what's better than freezing and unfreezing a target? freezing and unfreezing a target and bleeding a target. You know what's even better than that? Hiding behind a large shield while you do it so that they can't do any damage to you. So what we have here is the Cross Naginata and we have Frost build up on it. This comes natively with Blood Loss build up at 45. I'm also running a seal because we have a little bit of faith because we're going to need to cast some incantations. Then we are running the fingerprint shield. There are some alternatives to the fingerprint shield that I'll talk about here in a second, but this is the one we're running now. And then of course I have my a dagger here. This is just so I can go invisible when I need to. That doesn't matter. For our head, we're wearing the white mask because bleed increases our damage. And we are using the Lord of Blood's exaltation because this and this right here is a 30% damage increase. Then we have the great shield talisman. This boosts our guard boost. As you can see there, we're currently at 89. We have the magic scorpion charm because this does magic damage. So this boosts the magic damage as this does. I constantly run out of stamina with this build. So I'm running this. You could swap this out with whatever. Now, the main important things here are how we're running the Cross Naginata, how we have the shield set up, the fact that we have this talisman here. This allows things to just wail on us and we lose no stamina no matter what. So to get the fire effect to reset everything, we use Fire's Deadly Sin and we can offset the damage that Fire's Deadly Sin does to us by casting Bestial Vitality. So I cast Bestial Vitality and then I cast Fire's Deadly Sin. And now you can see we're holding strong. We're absolutely fine. We're going to swap. We're going to drink this so I don't lose any of my runes just in case anything goes terribly wrong. We're going to come out here to this dude and we're going to get nice and close to him. And we're just going to poke him through the shield. There we go. We just froze him. And I don't know. Yep, there we go. We just froze him again. And there we just bled him. And now he's dead. So you can see it works relatively well. This doesn't even have crazy damage on it. I mean, right now we're currently at 889. That's not, it's not terrible. We could buff it a little more with some other things, but I mean, we currently have the, the blood buff right now too. But um, it, the, the damage doesn't really matter too much because the effects that are going on them are based on their HP. So their HP is what's hurting them. And as you can see, I'm running Bloodhound Step on the spear. That is because we're extremely heavy heavy. You can see here how heavy we are. This thing weighs a ton and you could do something like equip one of the things that increases your maximum equip load and then increase even heavier armor. So you take even less damage if you get attacked by something like magic damage because magic damage does get through this. We'll see if we can get him to do his, uh, his flame attack. Oh, you also have to be careful of grabs. So slow roll is not good. And the bloodhound step just allows us to bypass anything we need to because it doesn't care about weight. There we go. We'll see. You can see there, we take a little bit of damage. We took a tiny bit of damage there. We did heal through it because we still had a little bit of the bestial vitality going on. So let's talk about a few other ways you can further boost your damage with this setup. First off, you can use the spear talisman. That's going to boost your damage a little bit, but only if the target does an attack that bounces off of you. So some larger targets, they'll just attack right through your shield and they don't get that like little bit of stutter. So I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll let this dude hit us. You see that little bounce back that he does there? You have to hit them shortly after they do that animation there. So if I just strike him, 367. But if I do it real quick, we're doing 440. So I'll show you here. We'll hit this guy. And then I'm going to actually not let him. And I'll do it. It's 367, right? And then we strike right there. 
440. So you get a little boost in damage by using the Spear Talisman, but it's not going to work on every target. Other options you can use to boost your damage are the Sword Insignias, because you're just going to be attacking non-stop, so you're going to build those attacks relatively quickly. You're not going to take damage very often, so the Ritual Sword Talisman is also another solid option. Or you could do something like the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, where you're just going to slowly gain HP over time, and that's going to make up for any magic damage that you may take through the shield. Although you should have pretty good health, so those things shouldn't be that big of a deal. So taking a look at our stats, you can see with this setup, you need high strength and high intelligence, and that is for two reasons. One, equipping this shield takes an absolute ridiculous amount of strength at 48 in order to use this specific shield. Our spear scales with intelligence because we have the frost effect on it. When you equip the frost effect, that's an intelligence affinity, so that is going to scale with intelligence. So we want as much intelligence as possible so that we are putting out some actual damage with this spear. Now, we're not reliant on 100%, once again, Again, on the damage that the spear puts out, we're relying on the bleed and the frost effect, but having high attack power is always a good thing. You can't go wrong with it. So we have a lot of intelligence and we have a lot of strength. We also need a lot of endurance in order to be able to equip this thing in any type of armor to begin with. But because we are high intelligence, there is another option for another shield, but it's a little bit more involved to use to get the same effect that we get from this shield. So you still need to have the great shield talisman on in order to boost the guard boost. So we're going to come over here and equip the golden great shield this gets us pretty close if we come over here and we just give this guy a little poke here with just this setup that we have now we let this dude hey buddy hit me oh not there we go with just this setup we have here without having anything else extra you can see He's doing just the tiniest bit of stamina damage to us, but we are able to easily recover from that and trade hits with no problem. And this is fine for these little guys where their attacks bounce off and you have time to recover before they hit again. However, bosses and some bigger targets, they'll strike right through your shield and keep striking and eat away at that stamina a lot because the amount of stamina you lose is based on the amount of damage that they're hitting for. But we can make this shield just like the fingerprint shield by by just equipping any any staff it doesn't really matter we're not really relying on spells although we could but we're just going to equip any staff and then have the scholar's shield once you have the scholar's shield spell you activate it and now if we come over here and we just give this guy here a little poke hey 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 buddy hey hit me now you can see we're not taking any stamina damage at all. So that gets your guard boost up to 100 so that you're not taking any stamina damage. And then in this case, this shield will act just like the fingerprint shield. The downside is, is you have to keep that up. Once it drops, if you don't have it up and you're in the middle of a boss fight and your boss fight took too long and this drops, you're gonna have to try to reapply it. But you can see here when you're switching, you're gonna have to watch your timing because when you switch, you drop your guard so you'll have to switch over wait for your timing activate it again and it is a long process that it takes to activate that and some bosses are pretty much on crack and you might not get a chance to do that so just something to keep in mind there this this is an option but it's going to be a little bit more finicky than just using the fingerprint shield but it does weigh considerably less and it takes less strength to equip it it being only at 34. but your best in slot and least finicky option is just going to be to use the fingerprint shield and have at least 48 strength so that's pretty much it for this one this wasn't really like a full build guide this is kind of just a hey here's an idea give you guys something to play with some ideas maybe give you some inspiration on a build i do like it it is it does a lot of fun and it's relatively easy and low maintenance to run as well so you just cast this you pop over you cast this and then you swap back over to your spear and you just run around a level blocking and just owning everything relatively quickly uh you do have to make sure because you're the of the way you're set up that things don't get behind you but that's pretty easy to do because you have bloodhound steps so you're super fast and mobile 
And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this setup. Uh, are you running anything like this? If you run something similar, is it giving you any inspiration for your own builds? I just like getting these kind of little ideas, these little combos out there to, uh, you know, help you guys out. If you found the video helpful, informational, all that good stuff, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Leak or Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.